At last, the fire engines left. I stood in front of my beloved mouse hole. Snout up, Geronimo. I told myself. I opened my front door. Whoosh, I was hit by a flood of water. I hope I cried as the tyrant swept me away. Benjamin grabbed my tail before I ended up back on the street. I went around checking out the damage. What a mess. The place was sopping wet. I stared at my precious belongings as they floated by. I spotted a burnt-up yellow object. It was Benjamin's teeth. In the kitchen, watery cheese slices stuck to the wall like glue. I felt like crying. All of my hard work, all of my decorating, it was all for nothing. I stared glumly at my watery living room. I noticed that the window was wide open. The charred curtains twisted in the breeze. The ornament from my great-grandma, Tengdorfer, lay on its side. Yes, that is what started the fire. A dust of wind must have blown the candle flame onto the curtains. I sighed. What is that spotty? The fire mouse always teaches young rodents in school. Never leave a burning flame unattended. How could I have forgotten? I sighed. I found two buckets. I gave one to Benjamin. We began scooping up water. We tossed it outside. The doorbell rang. I dragged myself to the door. It was there and trapped. Big brother, what's happened? My sister squeaked. Trap stared closely at me, then at my home. Jerry Jane, she cried. What did you start? Why did you start a campfire in your home? And what's with the class? You look like a furry mummy. I was so depressed, I hung my head. First, the trap, then the old mouse, then that rotten bully, then the candle, I sobbed. This is the worst Christmas Eve ever. I waded into the kitchen. It was completely flooded. I cried and cried. I cried so hard I began filling up the buckets with my own tears.